Marina Alexis. She should be a writer. While Mona's A reveal at the end of season two is almost universally appreciated by the Pretty Little Liars fan base, the second and third reveals of Charlotte De Laurentiis and Alex Drake, respectively, garnered much more divided reactions. Today I'm going to take a look at what is most hated about both A reveals, how they compare to each other, and which, in my opinion, was worse. Let's start with season six, episode 10, which revealed that Cece Drake, Allison's former friend and mentor, was the girl's tormentor, who stole the game from Mona between seasons two and three. After being led to believe that A was a man, due to their connection to the name Charles De Laurentiis in the dollhouse, this reveal linked Cece to the mysterious third De Laurentiis child by disclosing that she was born Charles, and transitioned fully at age 16 to become Charlotte. The first and most serious issue with this reveal comes from the writer's decision to make the only transgender character ever introduced on the show their primary villain. As a straight and cisgender woman, I don't have the authority or experience to speak on behalf of the LGBT community. Even as someone who was not personally impacted by A's identity, though, it was obvious to me how problematic it was to even indirectly link Charlotte's time as A to her gender identity, especially considering, once again, there were no positive examples of transgender characters on the show to counteract this narrative, and this was the only example of transgender representation on PLL at any point. There are some who may argue that Charlotte's motive and reasoning behind becoming A had nothing to do with her identity as a transgender woman. This is something that I may have agreed with at one time until I started thinking more deeply about how her story is told and intertwined. Charlotte's childhood, past, and desire to be seen as the girl that she was on the inside, not the boy that she presented as on the outside, was made into a heavy focus of her backstory. And when Charlotte's actual motive comes down to nothing more than a throwaway line about the liars being happy that Allison was gone, which wasn't even true. I'm gonna miss that. Me too. It leads to the natural conclusion that Charlotte's time as A is directly connected to her gender identity. There's a lot more to unpack in regards to this aspect of the story. The fact that A openly identified herself by her dead name, or the name assigned at birth that most transgender people wish to move fully away from. The references to A as it, even after the reveal. And creator Marlene Kane's weird and defensive claim that anyone who didn't enjoy the Charlotte reveal was just transphobic. Ultimately, making Charlotte transgender was an unnecessary and offensive storyline that served no purpose other than an attempt to fool the audience and create a plot twist that we wouldn't see coming. She is a she, right? I've included several links to articles on this subject if you'd like to read more about it. My next issue with Charlotte's A reveal is the extent to which the writers attempted to force viewers to feel sympathetic toward her. Very unlike her cool, collected C.C. Drake persona, the Charlotte that we see in 610 is weepy, teary-eyed, and emotional for a big portion of the episode. I can only speak for myself, but I don't want to feel like I'm being manipulated into feeling bad for A. I want to see them as the evil supervillain that they are, not a sad, tragic character who's been hurt so much that you just can't help but root for them. What worked when it came to Mona was that we weren't necessarily supposed to sympathize with her during her reveal. It was only as the show went on and we began to naturally see the layers to her character that many viewers began to see her in less of a black-and-white way. With Charlotte, it felt as if the writers were trying to push the audience to feel for her and forgive her, the way the liars appeared to almost instantaneously. You've been such a bitch to us. But we heard your story. We understand. Only to kill her off in the very next episode without providing any actual character development. I didn't find myself caring about Charlotte or her death, because the writing during and after her reveal didn't prompt me to do so. Finally, I want to revisit my earlier mention of Charlotte's motive, which is told to us through this one line. Those bitches were happy that you were gone. And that, oh, that really, really pissed me off. As nothing else in the episode suggests otherwise, it seems that we were expected to believe that everything that Charlotte did as A was a result of something she was told by an extremely drugged and out-of-it teenage girl. Some of Charlotte's greatest hits as A were holding five girls in an underground bunker, causing a multitude of near murders, and blowing up an entire house. The idea that she committed all of these atrocious acts because the liars didn't have what she considered an appropriate reaction to Allison's death is weak and ridiculous, and removed any sympathy I may have been able to have for her after hearing her tragic backstory. This is a case of totally misplaced rage, and it didn't serve as either a redeeming backstory for A, or a satisfying motive behind why she wanted to do such horrible things to a group of teenage girls, which was one of the prime reasons why people were so engaged in the mystery in the first place. Now let's move on to discuss some of the biggest issues with the Alex Drake reveal in Season 7, Episode 20, the series finale. I don't think I'll ever forget the disappointment and disbelief that I felt as I watched PLL's conclusion for the first time, or the extent to which those same feelings were echoed online in the days afterward. 
There were a wide variety of complaints about the identity, backstory, and context of AD. But I'll start with one of my biggest issues. Why should I care about a random evil twin that none of us ever knew existed? Many members of the cast and crew promised huge betrayals in the final episode, but finding out that the ultimate villain is a character that both the audience and characters have never officially met was the opposite of heart-wrenching. There was no emotional connection because, unlike with Mona or even Cece, we had no prior exposure to Alex in order to form any kind of attachment to her character. She was written into the show and introduced purely for the purpose of being A, which detracts from the idea that the girl's tormentor is someone they know personally. Building off of this, one aspect of the reveal that was particularly disappointing to me was the fact that only Spencer was impacted in any way by AD's identity. Four out of the five liars had no ties at all to Alex, and their indifference toward her reveal is beyond clear, even when they first come face to face with her. Ezra! This finale lacked the emotional impact and heartache of the season two ending for that reason. Only one of the liars had any reason to care about AD's identity, and even she couldn't be overly affected by a sister that she'd never met. Although I could rant about how much I hated the series finale for hours, don't even get me started on the decision to make the final villain an evil British twin, I mean seriously, how hard did Mona hit you? The last thing I want to focus on in this section is how poorly this episode itself was crafted. Not only did the majority of the main characters play virtually no role in AD's reveal, but they crammed the entire climax of the episode into the final ten minutes. It was beyond ridiculous to watch the gang piece together that A must be Spencer's secret evil twin in the span of 30 seconds, based on a spooked horse, a book of poems, and a different smell. Well, what if twins run in the family? That would make her Charlotte's half-sister. And someone with the motivation to be AD. There was no satisfying buildup of the liars noticing changes in Spencer and coming to realize that she wasn't who she claimed to be. No dramatic unmasking of A and the revelation that their best friend's twin was trying to take over her life. And no fallout from the reveal whatsoever. It felt as if the final A storyline was crammed into the ten minutes left over, after the writers had spent an entire two-hour episode pandering to teenage shippers. Because both the Charlotte and Alex reveals had such huge baggage and problems, it was hard for me to determine which episode, in my opinion, is worse. When it comes down to entertainment and level of enjoyment, I had to go with Alex. While I absolutely don't condone the offensive transgender representation portrayed by Charlotte's backstory, there are a few reasons why I see the episode and reveal as a whole in a more enjoyable light. One major point for Game Over Charles is that all six of our main characters play a role. While it was disappointing that only Allison actually had the chance to interact with Charlotte as she told her story, at least we got to see the reactions and responses from the four liars and Mona. We see their initial reactions to seeing Cece in the black hoodie, and they're able to respond to and expand on Charlotte's story over the course of the episode. In the series finale, on the other hand, aside from Spencer, the liars could not be further removed from the main storyline. They get to hear none of Alex's story, and we barely even get to see their reactions to her identity. When Toby and Ezra play a larger role in the final reveal than Arya, Emily, Hannah, and Allison, you know you've messed up. It was such a shame that almost all of the actual main characters played such relative background roles in the series finale, especially someone like Allison, who the show had once revolved completely around. Like I mentioned earlier on, another major disappointment for me in the series' conclusion was how little the actual AD mystery was featured. It took over an hour in for Alex's identity to finally be uncovered, and even Alex's story is overshadowed at times by the drama surrounding Arya and Ezra's wedding. Between the proposals, tedious sex scenes, and pregnancy drama, it felt like the mystery, you know, the whole point of the show, took a major backseat. In comparison, at least Charlotte's reveal episode centered completely on telling her story and ending her arc of the show. The love interests weren't present in the episode at all, eliminating any romance subplots completely and allowing A to take center stage. Although her backstory and motives may have been beyond disappointing, at least one thing that reveal has going for it is that it actually felt like an engaging mystery show, not a soap opera with a side of stalking. Finally, Charlotte's reveal had a note of originality, for better or worse, to it that was lacking in Alex's episode. In fact, 720 in many ways felt like a total carbon copy of 610. One of the liars is kidnapped by A, check. A is revealed as the secret, previously unknown sibling to one of the girls, check. A keeps that liar trapped in order to tell their whole story before proceeding to try and kill her? Check. As much as I disliked Charlotte's reveal overall, it at least felt like I was watching something new. When seeing the series finale for the first time, I had the sense that I'd already seen all of this before. And I had, on the very same show. This is a topic that I could go on about for hours, and this video definitely doesn't address nearly all of my thoughts on either Charlotte or Alex's A reveals. So I'm especially curious to hear your thoughts. What did you think about the A-reveals and backstories? 
let me know in the comments, and I'll see you next time.